Good morning, fans of Privateer FX. Coming at you, O2, is it? O3, sorry, O3, March. Crazy last hour, last night in stocks. 50 handles from 45 to 95. Um, we're approaching the 50% retracement, which is sort of 31 and a quarter, but all eyes are on um, the G7 meeting today, 1 p.m. CET. Um, this is obviously, uh, should be, well, I think it's going to be by the rumor, saw the fact now, yesterday got a little bit out of hand, up to 95 down there, now we're down to 50. We had to cut most of our uh, short S&Ps, just couldn't withstand the heat there, um, but it was our second time trading that round, whatever, and, and so it was fine. I mean, uh, first time we sold 20s and bought 50s below. So, I mean, we were selling 20s and 40s yesterday and then just had to cut um, up at 70. Didn't have the wherewithal um, to resell at 31.25. And knowing that we have this big meeting today, uh, we just need the powder dry uh, for these sort of tactical trades. And that's the theme uh, in what we would call this bear market action. Tactical trading is your key. Obviously, we have a bias to sell high ones, but we can also buy low ones. You saw on Friday we were buying 28, 2870s, selling 29 and a quarters. The point is this shit moves a lot. Uh, and so you want to have tactical trading around a view. Um, we feel this is a uh, best bet. Uh, what happened today? We had uh, RBA today, right? A couple hours ago. Um, not really much action here. On, uh, let's take a look. In fact, Aussie jumped on the rate cut, which is a bit weird. Uh, I guess they're like they're doing what they can to save the save the day. So we had to jump up to sixty five, back down to forty one. Really, nothing to speak of here. Uh, but it does set the table for further cuts uh, for this afternoon and sort of some sort of global coordinated uh, mumble fuck. So I don't really know what to do with this. I mean, obviously, I'm a seller of Aussie. Um, printed up to 65.71, but, you know, the, the sell point is up here at 66.50 now. You don't want to chase this down here if you're not core short, so there's not really much to do in Aussie. Dollar yen, a lot of people are drawing this line. Uh, we had it drawn yesterday. It came in at 60. We had some other splendid technicians send us this, which comes in whatever at 80 or whatever the high point is. You get the point. Um, a lot of people are short now against this. Makes it even better for break traders, 85. The bingo number today and the and the reason uh, this can go up now the first bit is people getting out of US assets now this next bit is going to be the US can cut rates a lot more than Europe can and in fact Europe will apply fiscal stimulus and US will cut rates this should be good for euro just getting some coffee there sorry um, what else is out there cable on its knees the the budget's March 11th that's going to that's going to suck the duck um cable looks bad uh euro sterling looks looks strong a bit extended now but looks strong if you're a seller wait for the 90s if you're a buyer um try and try and grab some down uh 86 90 80 or 70 Pretty neutral here at 87.22. Let's look at crude. Um, we really are, are um, fired up to sell this uh, around this 
figure 30 area um, this is uh, this is like a key resistance we got up to 4855 last night what a ridiculous move this has been uh, five bucks ten percent heavens to Betsy crude is on a rampage I'm not a very good crude trader uh, that's what the numbers say so keep that in mind when I'm giving you giving you crude advice just checking the calendar here we obviously 1 p.m. is the big sort of powwow uh, amongst all of these uh, knuckleheads um, but before that we do have hmm, not much Spanish unemployment Swiss GDP nobody cares um, European CPI today it's not too um, not too volatile but will be watched um, and then we've got this G7 stuff uh, I guess there's gonna be a presser at 1 p.m. moving on uh, gold we're buyer of gold it's just so tricky now I mean this red bar is just incredibly annoying um, we're being patient now you want to buy low ones to trade it you can I have a sneaking suspicion that we are going to uh, revisit 64 there's obviously one two three three daily lows there there will be stops below we do have these uh, G7 guys speaking today so there's likely volume and also nobody has squared according to the press all of the ETFs and all the retail people nobody took pain on this bar so we might have some more liquidation pain um, you know we talked about basically trying to get long this stuff at 1520 uh, 1500 1520 so if you bought 60 sold 90s you're kind of long at 30 um, and you can tepidly trade for an average, but we do like long, we do like long gold. Dollar yen, uh, be bopped up to 50. Um, as you can imagine, that's perfect resistance. That was sort of the breakdown level after all of the huge buying um, up between 109.50 and 110. This looks like a sell-on rally. Again, if the U.S. cuts rates, Japan can't cut rates anymore. Um, so, dollar-yen should go lower. What else? I mean, I, I don't even want to go any further on the charts, really. This is all about the G7 meeting today and what they do. Uh, I have a feeling, you know, you want to fade any action that they do. I said it on Twitter. I'll say it here. This is not something you can fix with fiscal uh, fiscal action. Uh, if you cut rates and mortgages, whatever, $10 trillion in mortgages, there's less payments, which creates helicopter money. I, I get all of that, but if nobody's leaving the house, if nobody's congregating, if events are getting canceled, if businesses are being shut, the knock-on effects of this are huge. Uh, and our big fear is that debt will not be serviced. Uh, and if corporate debt is not serviced, as in the interest is not paid for some of these zombie companies, uh, this will lead to the true catastrophe, which is not the stock market lower, which is the turn in the bond market. Speaking of which, let's take a quick look at the bonds. ZN's not doing too, too much. Um... You know, we're a point away from the highs. We talked about it yesterday. Boons are a sell when the rates match the cash. Um, so that's that's pretty close, right? 75 basis points will be the matchup. Um, where are we now? Let's see, 62.5 to find the booned yield. It's DE10Y. So, we've been through this before. You all remember uh, us being short boons 
We got short early last time from 50 basis points. And we wore this fucking shit all the way down to 72 basis points. And then we were like gleefully short boons, long yield. And we, we just kind of gave up on it uh, at the end of the year. We do like this trade. Thankfully, we've avoided it so far. Um, but uh, down at 75, we're back on the short boons trail. The other trade that we really like that's been very, um, it's collaborated very well, ironically, is short BTPs um, with the idea that Italy is going to have to um, worry about selling bonds and who's going to buy Italian bonds. Um, this has been incredibly uh, just sort of beautiful, beautiful turn. Yesterday was kind of a big day um, in a sense. There was a rebound up to 145.70. Um, but short BTPs, I think the yield, the Italian yield is, is 114. Ask your grandma if she'll buy Italian bonds with a 114 yield. Anyway, uh, we will continue to sell uh, BTPs anywhere on the 146 handle, preferably uh, when stops are done above 146.50, which could be today when they make some stupid announcement about QE or whatever the hell they're going to do. Uh, but we do like short BTPs. All right, I've said enough. Uh, we're waiting till 1 p.m. CET time. Keep your powder dry. Save your energy. Uh, try and visualize some setups uh, for the moment. Good luck out there, people. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Ciao.